It is indeed a <clears throat> complex um, problem. And just in case you hear that sound, this is not a complicated Morse code, it's just the heater system. Um, I want to, um, since the time is limited for these events, I would like to definitely recognize another question, even though it is a little bit too long, um, that has been sent to us from Greece. Uh, this is from a uh, member of the Hellenic Literature Association, a retired military figure. Uh, who does, I think, a very thoughtful analysis of various problems in the, um, not only in Greece, but uh, in, a, in a larger sphere. Um, he points to huge defense expenditures, to structural problems of the Greek economy uh, that cannot, as he says, or she says, uh, that cannot be solved uh, within the uh, European uh, Union and, and uh, ECB mechanism of the Troika or Distroika, as we now call it, um, and points to the situation of Greece uh, also geographically, which is not comparable to uh, other countries of Europe because this is uh, Greece is situated at the joining point of three continents, um, so it 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 has a special role, and uh, it says here Greece must remain economically and politically stable. Um, because as a stabilizer and peacekeeper in the area, uh, since that, is, th that function of Greece is lacking, it has also destabilized a very volatile situation in the Balkans and the Eastern Mediterranean. So um, to the author, I will pass this question on for a, a bit more of a detailed treatment because it is it's just a little bit too long. I, would, I wanted to recognize it though because a, a friend from Turkey uh, a longtime friend of our organization has sent in a very simple question that touches upon uh, what you are raising. And it says here, Turkey started a new foreign policy under the slogan, zero problems abroad, a couple of years ago. And now she ended up surrounded with enemies. The question is, what did the foreign affairs minister of Ankara do wrong? Or what was wrong in his ways of thought? Well, I think that the <clears throat> um, situation for both Greece and Turkey uh, is essentially that the problem is empire, that you have homemade problems for sure. And, you know, I think in Turkey you have different historical uh you know, currents and tendencies which are quite opposite to each other. But I would say that the large part is really not not located either in Greece nor in Turkey, uh, but that the problem is right now that you have a tendency to em towards empire. And that tendency existed, obviously, uh, for a long time. <clears throat> but it really escalated when the Soviet Union disintegrated because the natural impulse to keep a certain amount of science and technological progress uh, in part also motivated by the fact that you had two armies of two blocks, uh, that you had a certain counterbalance, you know, you had, which was not a good thing, but it, 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 it uh, you know, had, a certain effect that you had countries allied with either the West and the United States and Europe or with Russia or with China created a, a different dynamic, uh, which, you know, led to, uh, as I said, it was not a, a desirable condition, but it let, it left certain options. And what is happening since the collapse of the Soviet Union uh, you had this drive to what is normally called globalization, uh, <clears throat> which really was a huge paradigm shift in the direction of, uh, you know, <clears throat> basically uh, increase the power of the banking sector, of speculation away from production, outsourcing production to slave labor uh, markets, uh, to have an increased integration of the banking system of the central banks, the investment <coughs> banks, the hedge funds, the security firms, 
becoming this financial monster uh, called globalization, which we call the British Empire because it is the policy uh, of empire. And a lot of things can only be explained as a derivative of this larger <clears throat> uh, empire tendency uh, in the world. Uh, because a derivative of that policy is then that certain interests were financed. Uh, for example, the spread of these NGOs, uh, the spread of organizations which pretend to be advocates of democracy and human rights, but in reality, uh, in many cases, uh, turned out to be destabilizing uh, forces for the sake of the empire, for the sake of regime change, as we could see it in the case of the Orange Revolution in Ukraine, the Rose Revolution in Georgia, or now <coughs> this uh, <coughs> disgusting spectacle of pussy riot in, uh, in Russia, where one can only say, <coughs> you know, that the people who are promoting these kinds of values Uh, they should really look into the mirror of what are they promoting. Uh, <clears throat> now, as I said, the tendencies of this, I would really uh, urge you to, to consider because the dynamic, why are all the neighbors uh, of Turkey now in an adversary condition? I don't know if that is really the result of Turkish policy or is it not the result of a general dynamic which has turned the whole world into a nightmare uh, of the kind I was uh, speaking of in the beginning. And in the same way, I think only if we return to the uh, paradigm of the peace of Westphalia, where national sovereignty is being respected, where we form a community of principle among sovereign nation states. And part of the new paradigm has to be Uh, you know, that the interest of the other, which is one of the crucial principles of the peace of Westphalia, has to be put on the table. We are on the verge of our own destruction by pursuing supposed geopolitical interest against each other or in the sake, for the sake of this empire. And we have to replace this by a system which was uh, accomplished after long Four year long discussion in uh, Münster, uh, establishing the Peace of Westphalia, uh, where the first principle was that for the sake of peace, uh, that all crimes committed by either one side or the other have to be put aside and forgotten. And the second very important principle was that for the sake of peace, from now on, every country has to pursue the interest of the other as if it would be its own interest. Now, I happen to think that this approach comes from uh, Nicolaus of Cusa, the great uh, thinker of the 15th century, who was the father of the sovereign nation state, uh, outlined for the first time in his uh, one of his early works, Concordancia Catholica, uh, <clears throat> and which has the idea that peace in the macrocosm Uh, can only exist if you allow the development of all microcosms, and na meaning nations, and that each microcosm, each nation, has to absolutely develop the other nation uh, to its own self-interest. And I think that that principle, uh, which is obviously the opposite of present foreign policy, which is subversion, murder, uh, you know, destabilization, If we cannot come to this level of understanding, then the consequences will be such as I, as I outlined uh, earlier. But I believe in the ingenuity of people. Uh, I believe that man is capable of making a leap and that Friedrich, uh, Gottfried Leibniz was absolutely uh, correct when he said that a great evil uh, has the power to evoke an even greater good. And that is what we have to do. And uh, that is what why I'm saying we need to have a discussion about the peace initiatives. And I'm re-emphasizing re it because obviously these questions were sent before what I uh, laid out in my presentation. 
But the answer is in what I said. We have to have a paradigm shift. We have to have a comprehensive large development project for the entire region from Central Asia to the Gulf, from Iran uh, to, to the Mediterranean as one region. And uh, I have a vision how that can look in 20, 30 years from now as an incentive for people to stop killing each other. And we have to have an agreement on the common aims of mankind uh, fighting together uh, against the threats which could kill us all, uh, which range from nuclear missiles to asteroids, uh, earthquakes and green policy. And we have to defeat those things. And that is what we need to discuss. And I would actually urge people beyond this webcast to keep uh, calling us, sending emails, sending contributions, write in papers, because we want to open an international forum for the discussion of such uh, constructive solutions uh, as an alternative to the present doomsday uh, policy of the EU and other governments.